So uh, let's go back to Lily and get some more questions answered. So right here we have a math question and it asks to solve for x. <coughs> and here's the equation. It is too long for me to state. So it is yeah, quite long. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, during the break, I went ahead and, and copied this onto my, my screen so that you guys wouldn't have to sit here and watch while Lily read it to me. But here is the equation. is rather long, but we're going to try and make it a little bit easier to solve. So um, one of the things that I notice here uh, appears a lot of times is the distributive property. And typically if you see this in an equation, and I'll show you what, what that is in a second, um, that's what you really want to take care of first because when we have numbers written this way, uh, we can't combine any like terms, we can't make anything simpler. And when you have a long equation like this, especially you want to try to make it as simple as you can. Um, so distributive property is this. This is an example of, of something where you would want to use the distributive property. And what we need to do is that we're saying that this is four times the quantity, because of the parentheses, of 5x plus 17. So we would need to make sure that this 4 gets multiplied by the 5x and also by the 17. So we'll take 4 times 5x, we get 20x. Then we'll do 4 times 17, we get 68. So that's the first one. And we'll do a similar thing to the rest of them. So plus 7 times 21x, so 7 times 21x is going to give me um, 147x. And then we also need to do 7 times, and this time we'll think of this as negative 5, so minus 35. And then again, we'll continue. So 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times 4, 12. And then keep continuing. Plus 9 times x, so plus 9x. And then 9 times negative 3, negative 27. Still quite a long equation. So we really haven't made things simpler, but we have kind of opened it up to where now we can start combining like terms, putting things together that are similar. So like terms um, would be, for example, this, 20x and positive 147x. 68 would not be a like term with 20x because 20x is saying 20x is, 68, it's not the same there, no x's there. So when we combine like terms, we also want to make sure that we only do it on either side of the equation. We don't want to combine them all that are the same. That equal sign keeps things separate for us. So I will, on the left side, I'll combine the 20x and the 147x. And then on the right side, I'm going to combine the 3x and the plus 9x. And we do always consider the signs with that. So 20x plus 147x is going to give me 167x. And then on the right side, I have 3x plus 9x. That gives me 12x. So those are the x's. Then we're going to have to combine the other terms, which are constants. So we have positive 68 and negative 35, which is going to give us positive 33, so plus 33. And then on the right side of the equation, we have positive 12, negative 27. And that's going to, when we put those two together, and when I say put them together, just add them together, and you'll end up getting negative 15 there. And now, as you can see, we have a much simpler equation. One thing that tends to throw people off um, is the fact that we have variables on both sides of the equation. That really does tend to throw people off. So if that's something that confuses you, you're not alone. Um, and it is kind of a problem. And the way that we can solve it is just by getting our variables all on the other side of the equation. Now, the side doesn't really matter, that what we do it on. Um, I tend to put all the x's on the side that has more of them already. So I'm going to take this 12x. I want to move it to the left side of the equation. In order to move it, I have to do the opposite of what is there, which means subtracting it. So I'm going to subtract 12x from both sides of my equation. What happens on the right is 12x minus 12x. That gives us 0. So we're just left with negative 15. And on the left, we now have 179x plus 33. 
starting to get simpler. Um, we need to find out what our x's are, so we're going to undo all of the things that are going on with this x. We have 179 times x, and we have plus 33. We'll start with this and subtract 33 from both sides. And that's going to give us negative 48. Um, am I off on my numbers? Oh, I was supposed to subtract. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Guys, you got to keep me, got to keep me on that. You were going to do it. You were just on a roll. Keep you honest. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I was supposed to subtract my x's. Sorry. It was 155x. I added the 12. You're supposed to subtract. So we have 155x is equal to negative 48. Now, um, what we want to think of is that this is connected with multiplication. And so to undo multiplication, we're going to divide basically doing inverse operations. So in this case, and I'm going to use a calculator because it's going to be a decimal. And we end up getting not a very nice decimal, but that's okay. It's negative 0 0.3096, but then the next number is 7, so we're going to round it to this. And if I were Nate, I would go back and I would plug in my solution for x. I would plug it in and replace it in my equation to make sure it works. Yeah, you should go ahead and do but that. But since this is such a long <laughs> equation, would you like to do it for me? No, I think uh, you already said I know you this, love so. checking, so I, I could let you do it if you <laughs> really like. I think it, well, it's, it's gone now. Oh, yeah, it's too late. missed our opportunity. Uh. But we, would, we could replace our x with our solution and check to these, make sure both sides were equal. These problems are interesting because I feel like they're very intimidating to a lot of students. Mm -hmm. But the process, no matter how big or small the problem is, like the process is really the same of like simplifying and combining like terms. Mm -hmm. and, and what would you say if you were them. to generalize that process? Like you would say um, distributive property first. Sometimes I've said distributive if necessary. But I think if you said simplifying, that might be a more inclusive term because that would include distributing, right? True. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. Distribute, combine my like terms, make sure your variables are all on one side. Variables on one side. And then inverse operations to isolate. That's typically how I teach it in the sense of like, Oops, that's a nugget. here's four steps. If you're not sure what to do, um, apply this step. Think about how you can apply this. Operations. And inverse operations, meaning if there's addition happening to your x, right. you're going to subtract. If there's multiplication, you're going to divide and so on. Mm -hmm. So this kind of, I guess, generalizes the whole process that we just did. Yeah. And, and that, that is the thing that's so confusing sometimes, is that every different equation that students get, they're like, well, I did know how to solve the last one, but now I don't know how to do right. this one, because it looks different. Right, and the process is still the same. It's just right. a little bit different manipulating. Depending on what you're presented with. Yeah. Subscribe. Subscribe! Come on, push the button. You know you, yeah, you want, want to. to. <laughs> Do it.